months debating nothing else in their media in their parliament, even though their unemployment's out of control, poverty is on the rise. But this is the big issue. How many women wear the face veil in France? 1,900, according to the Interior Ministry. A 0.1% of the 2 million adult Muslim women in France. But that's the big issue in France. In Belgium, it's 215 women, according to a think tank in Brussels. 215. So few, they can actually put an exact number on it. They didn't have to round up or down. 215 women, and the whole country. You know, in Belgium, they have no government. They spent the last six months trying to debate who should be prime minister, what coalition will. And yet, they took a day out from all that wrangling to have a vote, an almost unanimous vote to ban the bell. That's what unifies the country. 215 women. There were more people at my wedding. <laughs> In Holland, you have Geert Wilders, who wants to ban the Quran, who says there is no difference between Islamism and Islam, it's all fascist, it's all totalitarian. He refers to Muslims as the molesters of goats. He wants to ban all immigration from Muslim countries, ban the building of all mosques. And he's now in government. He's now propping up the new coalition in Holland. It's got mainstream. In Switzerland. Last year they had a referendum which voted to ban minarets in Switzerland. Because of course those of you who have been to Geneva and Zurich will know you see nothing else. Alp minaret, Alp minaret, that's all you see. Four minarets, that's all there are in the whole country. And they had a nationwide referendum to ban it. In which the poster campaign showed minarets as missiles. That's Switzerland. In Italy, Berlusconi comes out every few months and says Western civilization is superior to Islam. His coalition partners in Northern League have tried to pass a law banning the construction of all mosques in Italy. In Germany, mild-mannered Germany, recently a former Bundesbank board member, a lefty, a social democrat, wrote a book in which he claimed that Muslim kids were dumbing down the education system. The book has sold half a million copies, is a bestseller in Germany. The German president gave a speech in which he said integrating the Turkish Muslim minority into the German mainstream is the challenge for Germany in the 21st century, just as reuniting the country was in the 1990s. Built the best-selling tabloid paper in Germany, ran as its headline, Mr. President, why are you sucking up to Islam? Again, do the substitution trick. Can you imagine a German newspaper that said, why are you sucking up to Judaism? Germany. You look around the continent and you really do have to say, thank God we are British, or I'm British. I do thank God that that is the case, because despite all the flaws in this country, and I've mentioned some of them already, and to do with our media and our politicians, the situation is still better here. We have a Muslim in the cabinet, Saeed Abbasi. The number of Muslim MPs doubled in May. There's no ban on the face veils anytime soon here, even the Conservative Party have said they're against it. But of course, you still do have the BNP, which has become a wholly anti-Islam party. They're no longer interested in Jews or blacks. It's all about the Islamic threat, taking on Sharia law. You have UKIP, that used to be worried about the European Union, but now is only worried about the face veil, and Islam, burqas, etc. And you still, of course, in this country, let's not get carried away, have some rather crazy anti laws <coughs> that do disproportionately impact on Muslim communities. As Hazel Blears, the then police minister, said, these laws will disproportionately hit Muslims. Stop and search will end up pulling over people who, quote, look Muslim. In fact, uh, today's Evening Standard has a report that 101,000 stop and searches were carried out under the terrorism law last year in London alone, which led to zero terror-related arrests, let alone convictions. You have other incidents, for example, before the election, David Cameron, then the leader of the opposition, used Prime Minister's question to fearmonger about two extremist Muslim schools, which turned out not to be extremist schools, but Hofstede turned out to investigate. So you have all sorts of incidents, but I would say it's still much better here. In fact, I used to often think Britain's good, we're much better than the rest of Europe when it comes to Muslims. And I used to think my wife's an American, an American Muslim, and I used to think America, actually, they're doing very well in America. And that's always been the contrast posed. You look at the European ghettos, you look at America, and you look and you see the difference over the years and you say, well, wait a minute, in America it's much better until this year. <coughs> not 9-11, not the Iraq War in 2010 is the year where everything's changed in America. You have the row over the so-called Ground Zero Mosque, and let me do a plug for my magazine, £3.50 Orchid Bookshops. Um, <laughs> 
I was reading a cover story this week ahead of the midterms on America's sphere over the ground zero, so-called ground zero mosque. And I wrote a piece about Muslims in America because it is crazy what's going on over there. It is absolutely crazy what's going on over there. The so-called ground zero mosque, which of course is not a ground zero and isn't a mosque. It's two blocks away. Uh, it's a community centre which will have prayer spaces for Jews and Christians, as well as Muslims, and a basketball court, a swimming pool, a theatre, and a library. I've never come across a mosque like that in my travels in the Islamic world. And yet, you look at the craziness that erupted over the summer in New York, in Manhattan, over this one building. You look at some of the comments that were made. Newt Gingrich, former Republican Speaker of the House of Representatives, he referred to the Muslim supporters of the center as Nazis live on television. Mark Williams, spokesman for the new Tea Party, which dominates the Republican Party, he called it a monument for the worship of the terrorist monkey god. Various commentators, bloggers, writers referred to the imam behind the project, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, a Sufi imam who's worked for both the Bush government and the Obama administration and wrote a book called What's Right with America. They've called him a stealth extremist, a radical, and linked him to Hamas. They say this is the Islamic takeover of America. You want to talk about demonization? Go to Manhattan. Move the center. Move it where? Where does it become acceptable to have an Islamic center? Two blocks away from the center. Four, six, eight, ten? Where does the Islam free zone begin? In fact, there are countless masjids and mosques across Manhattan. There's a mosque called the Masjid of Manhattan, which is four blocks away from the World Trade Center, and was built before the World Trade Center. So should that be moved to? This is some of the debate that's going on in New York. And it's not just about ground zero. People say, well, it's not about Islam. It's not about Muslim. This is about 9-11. This is about our memories of 9-11, about the sacredness of ground zero. Really? In Murfreesboro, in, in Tennessee, in Sheboygan, in Wisconsin, and in Temecula, in California, to name just three examples, there are anti-mosque protests going right now, on right now in America. In Temecula, California, protesters turned up at the mosque with dogs on purpose because they knew that dogs can't go into mosques because they're regarded as ritually unclean by Muslims. On purpose. The protests against some of these mosques are just as vicious, just as loud, just as angry. None of these cities, none of these towns is anywhere near ground zero. So it's nothing to do with none of that. This is about being anti-mosque, about being anti-Muslim, about fear of Islam in 21st century America. You look at some of the comments that are made on outlets like Fox News, etc., about all Muslims being terrorists, etc., etc., and it is shameful. And then there's no wonder when you look at the polls, the latest polls show that fewer Americans have a positive view of Islam today than they did in the wake of the 9-11 attacks. It was better in 2001, believe it or not. 37% of the US public only have a favorable opinion of the Islamic faith, according to an ABC poll. More than a quarter of respondents, 26%, said they had at least some feelings of prejudice against Muslims. In a separate poll for Time magazine in August, nearly a third of the public said that they thought Muslims should be banned from running for the presidency of the United States. And one in four said that they believed Obama was a secret Muslim. A quarter of the population. <coughs> I spoke to a Muslim American activist as I was writing this piece called Ibn Patel, who actually advises the government on, on internet <coughs> issues. He said it's worse than it's ever been. He said, in my 35 years of living in America, I lived through the Iranian Revolution, the attack on the barracks in Beirut, two Gulf Wars, 9-11, etc., etc. It's never been as bad as it is now. And as a European Muslim, looking over across the pond, it's very worrying because I look at US Muslims and I think those are the most integrated Muslims the most prosperous Muslims, the most stable Muslims, the most patriotic Muslims of any Muslim minority community anywhere in the West, they can't get it right there, then where are we going to get this right? Where are we going to get the balance right? And I just want to finish by just talking about a little bit about language. <laughs> because a lot of this is to do with language, about how we conceive things and how we speak about things. And one of the real problems in the media, let me be very, very clear, I'm not saying there's some conspiracy, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe there is some conspiracy. Yes, some sections of the press are deliberately Islamophobic, anti-Muslim, because they think it sells papers, because they think it serves a political agenda, etc., etc. It fits in with other anti-immigration trends, etc. Some people are not. Many, many journalists are not at all. They don't have an anti-Muslim bone in their body. And yet, they will write pieces or produce reports which have an equally stereotyping or negative effect and impact. Why? Because of language. Because we're captured by our language.